This is Ed Petke with the Americans in Wartime Experience. Today's date is September 26, 2021, and I'm conducting an interview with Michael Sakela in Oaksville, Virginia at the 2021 Tank Farm Open House. Sir, appreciate you sitting down and talking with me today. Uh, tell me about a little bit about yourself. Where'd you grow up and where are you from? Ah, uh, see, I grew up, I guess, uh, Manassas, Virginia, Alexandria, Manassas, Virginia. Um, you know, I went to, uh, I couldn't decide whether I wanted to go to college or, and, you know, uh, or what I wanted to do because college, you know, school just wasn't my thing. So I ended up going into the Army. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's basically I decided to go to Army instead of school. I mean, I did go to school also, but it wasn't for me at the time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of my family members are military, so I decided that, you know, I wanted to do my duty as well, just like they did. So military kind of runs in the blood of your family? It does. Okay. So you other, other family members in the military, same branch, Army? Uh, they were all over. Okay. Army, Coast Guard, Navy, Marine Corps, just everything. So... Air Force. Okay. Um... So what, what war did you participate in? Uh, I was part of Operation Noble Eagle at the Pentagon on 9-11. Um, so so you, were you at the Pentagon that day? So we actually, were, after the plane hit the Pentagon, we were called to go down there. So okay. we were actually on Fort Myer mm -hmm. um, when, when the plane hit and we got called to go back to uh, Fort McNair. We were stationed at Fort McNair in Washington, D.C. And we went and grabbed all of our equipment, and you know we took buses back to uh, Fort McNair, and then we took, then we went to, um, uh, we got all of our equipment, hopped on Deuce and a Halves, and started making our way down to the Pentagon. Uh, traffic was, it was crazy. Traffic was really nuts that day, and so we had to actually hop off the Deuce and a Halves and run the rest of the way to the Pentagon with all of our gear. How far a run was that? I wasn't too bad. It was, uh, you know, maybe <laughs> maybe a couple, few miles or so, but it wasn't, it wasn't terrible. I mean, with our equipment, it was, it was a little bit, but right. it wasn't too bad. So, how long after the planes hit are you actually there, standing in front of it? <sighs> I'm gonna say it was roughly, if I remember correctly, it was around three hours. Okay. So. so everything's still, for all intents and purposes, it's still fresh. It's still going on. Yeah. It's they, still happening. Putting the fires out. When we got there, the fires are pretty much out. Okay. So, you're you're down, you're down at your command, and how do you, how, how does that word come through? Like like a lot of people that day saw it on television. They're watching the events at the World Trade Center, and then that's how they that's how they learned. Is that how you learned? Guys learned about it, or were you notified it happened? Well, officially, we, yeah, we were officially notified. But we saw we saw the smoke from Fort Myer. Okay. We saw what was going on, you know, and um, then we were notified, mm -hmm. you know, the plane there was an attack. Had you Pentagon. had you guys seen what was going on in New York City at the time? We did. Yeah. We so you were watching that, and then well, we weren't watching it, but we heard of it. Okay, we heard of it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you get to the you get to the Pentagon. You're standing there. What what do you guys do? What's the first thing you guys do? So when we got down there, uh, our platoon sergeant, Sergeant Bell, was talking to somebody. Uh, I don't remember exactly who, but then he called. He wanted two guys from Color Squad, which was myself and uh, Sergeant Yellett, and they asked us to go in there first to um, pick up the, the whole body and remains. Um, so not everybody had to see the same thing. So we we went in, um, you know, put them in the bags, in the body bags, and uh, you know, then other people come in and carry those out. Okay. So you were, you were just identifying, securing, others Correct. were taking them out. Correct. And it started out. It started out as a. Um, you know, rescue and recovery and ended up being just recovery at that point, you know, the more we got there. Right. So how, how long before it, it ceases to become a, a, a rescue? When we realized that we weren't finding anybody that was alive okay. uh, at that point. Was there a point in time where you, where you did come across some who were still alive? No. No. Okay. No, I think that they, they might have gotten them out or they got out themselves uh, prior to us getting there. How long did you spend down there at the at the uh, Pentagon? I'll be honest with you, I don't recall exactly how many days. I'm gonna. Say, I remember the Red Cross. They brought out pillows and blankets and stuff for us to sleep okay. there when we were there. I'm gonna guesstimate, say, 15, 20 days. Okay. Um, and we, you know, we did have you know uh, relief come in after that right. on other companies. Uh, so Alpha Company we were there uh, first, and then other company. I think it was Charlie Company 
from the old guard got down there afterwards, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I didn't touch on this before, so what, what, what unit were you with at uh, this time? Yeah, we were Alpha Company, uh, 3rd U.S. Infantry, the old guard. Old guard, okay. So for 15 days, I'm, I'm assuming it's not, it's not body recovery for, for a whole 15 days. No. At a certain point in time, the, re the recovery ends, y your job and your focus shifts. It does. What does that go to? So we, we focus on um, getting out the plane parts. So okay. we, we focus on getting all the plane parts out. And Essentially, you're, you're picking up evidence. Right, and whatever else we could find. Um, and, you know, sifting through the uh, the debris. When after it was already outside, there was, you know, like one of the guys, uh, I don't want to say his name because I don't know if he's comfortable with that, but he found a, a ID card of one of the terrorists, actually. Oh, he did? Yeah. Um, so after after you st you're going through the plane stuff, you're, you're recovering all this stuff. I got to believe that you've got probably a lot of people looking over your shoulder, making sure, you know, government type people. Mm -hmm. um, did it did it feel as though you were being overly watched and scrutinized while you're doing this, or did you guys kind of they said, hey, we need you to find whatever you can that looks important and bring it out. Type of that's that's how it was. There okay. wasn't. I mean, there was obviously there were FBI. I think I think it was FBI. I believe if I'm not mistaken. But there were there were others that were in there, uh, and but they weren't looking over our shoulders. But we were. You know, we were just. They just wanted us to sift through everything and uh, the debris and uh, separate it out. Um, and obviously, you you found I'm sure many many pieces yourself. Um, anything that you would think that was out of the ordinary for being on a plane? No, I don't, I don't think uh, anything out of the ordinary. I mean, it, it's going to sound kind of weird, and I hate to say it, but there was uh, clumps of fat that we found, which was weird. But, yeah. you know, other than that, the ID card still being intact, that was just kind of weird. But other than that, that you know, okay. but that can happen. I mean, right. Not, not, not trying to say any conspiracy theories. Or anything no, like no, that. <laughs> and, and that's that's kind of where you know I was starting ahead of a little bit of a lot of people have a lot of different opinions of what happened that day. Yeah. Um, would it be safe to say you were of the opinion that this was clearly just someone flew a plane into the Pentagon? And I that would, was it. Yeah, I would say that it was a plane that hit the Pentagon based off of all the plane parts that we found, okay. and I know that other people, like we talked about earlier, that you know they have different opinions, they see different things. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's. I just, for me personally, I, I think it was a plane that hit the Pentagon just based off of all the plane parts that we separated. Um, so, um, do, you, do you have any other duties there beyond finding, you know, when you had to find the plane parts and, and obviously the, the recovery at first? Right, I just, just basically separating out um, uh, body parts and, and, you know, plane parts, okay. and that's, that's basically it. Okay. So you're there for roughly, roughly two weeks Ish, Roughly, 15, yeah. 15, I mean, two weeks. we were there. Yeah, we were there, and uh, and you know, also when we, when we got there, we didn't know 100 percent that you know that uh, we weren't going to get attacked again. Also, sure. so that was another worry. We also, when we went in, we weren't 100 um, percent sure that the building wasn't going to cave in on us either. You know, that right, was right. that was another portion of it. But you know, we we didn't think about that stuff until until afterwards. You know, afterwards is when you're like, wow, that's. I mean, you might think it for a second, but then your job is to go do what you're supposed to do, and you know, right. Overthinking it could be dangerous. Correct. And it's also doesn't get the mission done. Correct. Um, so, I mean, it's it's. I'm sure you know it's it's twofold, and I'm sure it's it's you know there's a lot of split probably decision on this or split thought on this. Is while it was a very arduous task, it probably you know made you you know it was probably very very good to be a part of um, something so monumental. For sure. Um, you know, and histor did, did had, at the time you're doing this, had you thought about the historical implications of what you were involved in at the time? Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Um, obviously, you know, 20, 20 years later, it, it's a significantly historical event right. um, that you were you were a part of. But at the time, like you said, you're driven, and right. that's all you're thinking about. Right. And they they gave us and that that is true. And they, you know, they gave us the opportunity. You know, if if anybody wants to sit out and not be a part of it and not go in and it was okay because there were so many of us willing to do that you know for us right. for you know I mean, when they called myself and Sergeant to yell it you know for us it was just go you know just there was no question you, know, you had a job we have a duty. you did it we you had a duty. duty yep 
So, okay. Um, what's your rank at the time? B5, sergeant. Okay. So, prior to this going into here, how long had you been in the military? Uh, see, I went in 97, and it's okay. 2001, so it's about right spot on, about, you know, four years. Okay. Um, what made you decide to, uh, to go into the military? Um, I had a lot of family that I was in. And, you know, I always looked up to, you know, the people that were in the military. And, you know, I, I respected the military and wanted to do my duty, you know, serve my country. Was, were you always driven to go to the Army or was... I was. Uh, you know, my grandfather, um, my mom's dad was in the Army. Um, and that's what, you know, I, I looked up to him a lot. And, you know, that's what made me decide to go that route. My dad was Air Force. I just didn't, uh, you know, I I think the Air Force is great. I think all branches are great. Just my decision was to go that route because I didn't want to be in the Air Force. I wanted to be in the you know, I wanted to be infantry. All so, right. okay. that's what I did. So, uh, when you you where did you, where did you uh, where'd you go and, and do your base again? Fort Benning, Georgia. Fort Benning, Georgia. So, what's uh, what was your what was your MOS going in? Eleven Bravo Infantry. Okay. Um, what'd you think of uh, Georgia? It was uh, <laughs> it was tough. I, you know, the the basic training was uh, was was kind of tough. Um, I, I remember I remember one time, uh, you know, we had this one guy that I beat in a in a I think it was a two mile run, I believe. And the drill sergeant was like, "No, you didn't." And then I had to run it again. He was like, "Just because he wanted him to win." <laughs> yeah, they they played those kind of mind games, you know, obviously. Um, so. Prior, had you had you been deployed anywhere prior to this? Had you gone anywhere? No. Stayed stateside. No. Yeah, we were an infantry company in D.C. in case you know, in case anything happened. That's okay. what our job was. So, for for people who don't understand what the old guard does, now that that's a, a storied, uh, very very proud historic unit. What what what's what what's, what is the old guard? Ah, old guard. So, basically, the, the commander in chief guard goes back a long time. Um, uh, It's uh, I'm trying to think the best way to explain it. <laughs> so we're we're a lot of times we're like ceremonial unit. Okay. So we do conduct a lot of ceremonies in regards to like funerals. So you know I've probably done I would guesstimate maybe a thousand funerals or so. Um, so we you know we carry the flag and you know the twenty one gun salute and that type of thing. And then there's also the tomb of unknown soldier, uh, continental color guard. So it's it's very old unit. So so. Needless to say, more than more than one trip to Arlington. Definitely more than one trip to Arlington. <laughs> Actually, I started out in Arlington, uh, um, and then he moved our company down to, to Fort McNair in DC. Okay. Yeah. Any um, ever any interest or anything about uh, walking the tomb? Yes, actually, I, I really considered it. Um, just at the time, it wasn't it wasn't the right time for me. Yeah. Okay. Very prestigious, though. It's very prestigious. Sure. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, coming back to when you were at the, at the Pentagon, after two weeks ish, ish, your time is up at the Pentagon right. for that duty. Where do you go from there? So from there, we went uh, we went back to Fort McNair and um, uh, did security around the base. And if I remember correctly, we did like three hours on, three hours off, three hours on, three hours off, which is horrible it was terrible but it was you know that's our, our job because you know there's water so we had to make sure nobody you know we're surrounded by water and this uh you know we had to buy the potomac and you know we need to make sure that nobody was coming on post and you know just just pulling guard and make sure nothing else is going to happen did you did you deploy outside the states at all no um so when you going back let's go back to the pentagon real quick um, you're there. Um, you're, you're not obviously not the only unit that's there doing. Are, are you? Are they sequestering you at any at any point? Because you're you're being coming into contact with some pretty sensitive stuff, uh, pretty you know secret stuff. Right. Are, are they keep trying? Are they kind of keeping you and what you're doing away from, uh, say you know prying eyes, prying ears, uh, other aspects of the recovery and everything? 
Yeah, so we actually, we had to sign a, a, a form saying we wouldn't really talk about what we've seen inside there. Okay. Um, so we did, we had that, you know, obviously. To not was, talk about specifics. Right, right. So we did, we did have to do that. Um, yeah, and other than that, I mean, there's not, you know, if you, if you go online and you look up, you know, what, what went on there at the very beginning and, you know, who was there and, you know, that type of thing. I don't really know that you would see Alpha Company, the old guard there. It does talk about like National Guard and, right. you know, things like that, but it doesn't really talk about our company being there, um, really. So it's kind of weird, but, you know, it was, it was a busy time and kind of sure. crazy. So were you one of the first, if not the first? We were the first company. Yeah, our, our company was the first. The, the first uh, military company to, to be there, other than whoever was stationed there. Correct, yes. Okay. Have you been back since? I drove by, haven't been back since, no. I See the, the memorial or anything? Thought about it, just yeah, haven't. At haven't the right gotten, time. Yeah, you know, eventually I'll make it down. Yeah, I gotcha. Okay. Um, anything, uh, wait, while you're there, anything anything about that day, if, if, if somebody mentions 9-11, mm -hmm. somebody mentions the Pentagon, is there, is there an, an, a thought or an image or a sound or, a, or anything that, that you immediately go to? Sure, there, there's definitely definitely smells okay. uh, that, that make me think about it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one, one of the things I, I you know, it, all the bad that happened that day, you know, there's, the way I seen America come together mm -hmm. was just different. It was, it was kind of, I mean, I, you know, we were on the back of those deuce, deuce and a halves um, you know, people were who and ha and you know, and that type of things. And little did they know we were we were scared just like they were, you know. <laughs> so sure. you know, but that was uh yeah, I mean that's that's the biggest things that stick out, you know, and uh was that, you know those things. Yeah. Um so um and, and while you while you're there, um what's What's going through your mind as far as what, because that, that's a day that they say, and I believe it too, it, it did change America. It, it changed America for the good in a lot of ways because it did bring the country closer. Right. Um, but also, you know, they talk about, you know, it, the, the post 9-11 world of it's not the same. Had you, had you thought, how, how soon after that did you realize that the world was different? Or going to be different? If at all, um, I you know I never I never really gave it a lot of thought, um, you know. But security the way it is now is a lot of things have to do with you know surrounding the nine eleven attacks, right. and it's, you know. But that's that's pretty much the only thing I could really think of. I mean, that's not. Yeah, I, I don't. I mean, politics obviously. You know, them trying to, hey, release the 911 papers, release them. Oh, we will in six months. You know, that type of thing. I don't, I'm not getting into politics, but right. you know, that's that's uh, you know, there's not really, really much that I can uh, say about that. So, going there that day, th there's a certain mindset and there's a certain way you're looked at and portrayed and, and thought about. Leaving that day, very, I'm, I'm sure, very different. Uh, in in, you know, as I said, you know, how the company, how the, the country came together and changed. Right. Um, were you treated differently after that? Or looked upon differently? Or the, I'm sure you, you know, you yeah, got... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think the, the military is respected more at, after that day. I think, yeah. you know, people... As was, a whole. Right, right. I do. I think that was... Yeah, definitely. That was a big difference, actually. Right. Yeah. And for, for the good. For sure. Um, so... How long after? How long do you stay in the in the army after after September 11th? How how, how long were you? In? I got out in December of '02. Okay. Um, actually, I was my my plan was to go back in. Uh -huh. I hurt my neck, so I you know I had an injury, um, PT. You got hit in the back out of whiplash, and I was like, you know, I'll get out and go back in. I'll get my neck fixed. Uh -huh. I knew it was going to take a little while, but then it just never happened. It just wasn't the same. My neck was. <laughs> 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 but no, I just you know, but it, yeah. you know, I did get out, and then that was it. Okay. So uh, you get you get uh, you get discharged. You go home. What's uh, what's life like after that? What do you, what, do you, what do you do after? What do you do post uh, military? Uh, I didn't know what to do. Actually, that's, that's a good question. I, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. 
um, and decided I, I like to help people. Uh, you know, I like to be in leadership roles, so I decided to go get a degree in health management. Um, that took me down multiple different paths. I, I still didn't know what I wanted to do, and, you know, and just got into healthcare. Pretty much stayed in healthcare. I'm starting my own business right now, um, and you know, other than that, I mean, I think a lot of the things that that uh, uh, that held me back, and you know, we don't like to talk about it, but you know, I did have PTSD from that day, and it took a long time to finally get some counseling for it, and I did. It actually helped, to be honest, it did. It took a while, the counseling took a while, but it, you know, and, I, and back then I'm like, there's no way I have PTSD, and there's no way I have it. The doctor said, oh, you need to get checked out for PTSD, and I did, and, right. you know, and I did have it, and, you know, after the counseling, you know, it's definitely gotten better, you know, since, since then. So, you know, for anyone who might see this, you know, if someone's feeling like they may, see, seeking help is, is the key. Definitely, and no, the, for sure. It the is. first hurdle is saying, you know, admitting it. I'm sure, and you know, that's the hardest. I will tell you, uh, a buddy of mine, he actually had PTSD, and he called me one day on the phone and took his own life. And you know, for people that have PTSD, that's not the route to go. It's not. I mean, the, the help, you can get help. I mean, and it, and it does help. Whereas in years ago, it was more of a taboo thing that people didn't talk about. It is. It's yeah. so much in the forefront now. It is, and it's, it's not the stigma. Yeah. You know, it's not looked upon as a negative thing it's no. you no. know and it shouldn't be no it shouldn't be I, I work at matter of fact right now i work at a behavioral health hospital you know and it's not like that kind of stuff is shouldn't be worried about what people think about that it's it's it can happen to anybody sure car accident whatever yeah. you can get ptsd from anything and i'm sure you bring a perspective to that job of a personal nature that you can relate to people right which makes right. it easier it does cool. so how, was, how has your time in the military and, and how has that affected your life? Uh, let's see. Um, my knees hurt and back hurt and neck. What, no, you're not talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> we can. <laughs> no, no, that's not. No, <laughs> no, um, no it's, it's, you know, it was an honor to serve, you know, and I, I, I wear that proudly that I was in the Army and, you know, I, I, it was an honor to do what I did at the Pentagon. Even though it was a horrible thing, it's still, you know, if somebody had to do it, you know. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, it, it's. Would you suggest it to y younger guys and gals now to, for military service? Would you advocate for military <laughs> service? It's hard to say. <laughs> uh, I would say that, you know, if nobody else, if they don't have anything else going on, then, you know, they should, absolutely. If there's nothing else that they can do, then absolutely. Um, there's still some nobility to it, I would think, and still some pride to it. There is. There definitely is. Um, you know, I, you know, if you would ask me, do I want my kids to go in the military? No, I don't. I don't want them to go through things, you know, like that, you know. Um, but I do, I, we do need our military. I mean, we absolutely do. And, you know, I just, I don't think it's for everybody, you know, obviously, but I do, I mean, I would still push for it. Infantry's tough. <laughs> it is <laughs> you know. the toughest. <laughs> um, so let's say theoretically your great, great grandchildren are sitting down watching this video one day. Mm -hmm. There's one thing you would want them to know about your military service. What would that be? I think that um, that I served proudly so they could be where they're at today. You know, I protect this country and, um, you know, so hopefully they can continue to live a free life in a free country. Is there anything else you'd like to add about your military service? No. No, thank you. Okay. Well. On behalf of the Americans in Wartime Experience, I'd like to thank you for sitting down with me. My pleasure. Thank you thank for you. your it was service. An honor. Thank you.